What we're going to do now is go ahead and run a make file so you can see the process, and then we'll go through and look at the make file line by line. So go ahead and navigate to the resource pack, and inside of the coders folder, go ahead and open up a folder called Drush Make. Copy this make file. It's 01 core module version patch and library.make. And then navigate over to an empty directory, ideally somewhere where you might want to install Drupal and go ahead and paste it in. Now because Drupal Make is available globally, we can go ahead and work in this directory even though Drupal isn't installed here just yet. And let's go ahead and jump to the command line. At this point in the series, we're gonna continue just using one development environment so we can go ahead and close these other tabs. And now let's go ahead and navigate to the directory. So for me, it's gonna be chris slash website slash install. I'm gonna hit enter. Now in order to get Drush to recognize the make extension, you may have to clear the caches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a Drush CC for clear caches. And I'm gonna select one for all. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do Drush make. And then we're going to put the name of the make file here. And I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask us if we want to make a new site in the current directory. And I'm gonna go ahead and select Y. Okay. And you can watch as things are being downloaded here. There's information for various modules for Drupal itself. A patch was also downloaded and applied, and there's some information about that here. And now if we jump to the directory where we ran the make file, you'll see that we have all our standard Drupal folders here. And if we expand the sites folder and look in all, we have a modules folder. And inside here we have a contrib folder. And we have advanced help and color box both of which were part of our make file. We have a libraries folder here, and inside of here we have the color box library. Now this is a third party thing that we would have had to have downloaded and installed separately from the module in order to get it to run. And we also applied a patch to the advanced help module. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the make file. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this make file inside of my editor. And you can see that this is actually very simple. Let's go ahead and read through this line by line. This first line specifies what version of core we're gonna be downloading, which is also an indicator of what version of modules we'll be downloading as well. And we're specifying this as 7.x. What this will do is download the latest version of the Drupal 7 code base. The API line specifies what version of the makefile API that we're gonna be using. Now at this point, what we're gonna be doing is building a set of arrays that will contain information about what projects we're going to download. This line specifies that we're going to download the Drupal project, and it will check the core version up here to decide what version is gonna be downloaded. And then this next line, we're specifying that we're going to be downloading the Colorbox project or the Colorbox module. Now we're using a bit of shorthand with this array instead of adding it as an empty item to the array we're specifying the item here, and then we're telling it what directory we're going to install this in. We want it in the contrib directory in our sites all modules folder. And we're telling Drupal make where to put this by specifying this subder property of the color box array item. So this could have easily been two lines where the first line looked like this, but instead of Drupal it was color box. And then we could specify the subdirectory, but this way we're getting it all on one line. In these next three lines, we're downloading the advanced help module. First of all, we're specifying what version of the module we want by assigning it to the advanced help key. And next, we're specifying where we're gonna put it. Again, we want this to go into the contrib directory just like our color box module. And then we're specifying a set of patches that we wanna apply. In this case, it's just one. But all we have to do is specify the location of the patch file wherever it resides. Most of the time it will probably be on drupal.org. This make file is purposefully simplified, but we may want to add comments here explaining what exactly this patch is supposed to do. Besides modules and themes, we can also download third-party libraries. Now these libraries may be used by several modules or perhaps the licensing doesn't allow it to be distributed with the module directly but we can download it as part of our make file because the make file doesn't include the files themselves. So notice that we're now using the libraries array instead of the projects array, and then we give it a name. In this case, we're calling it color box. This also specifies where it's going to be downloaded to inside of our sites all libraries folder. 
and we're specifying the type here is file. Next, we're specifying the URL where this can be downloaded. In this case, we're pointing to a URL that will download the latest version of the color box library. Now again, this make file is purposefully simplified, but if you want a more thorough example that demonstrates most of what Drush Make can do, you can go ahead and navigate to the Drush folder inside of your user directory, inside of the Drush Make folder, and open up the example.make file. I'm gonna go ahead and open this in my editor. Now if you scroll down, you'll see examples of how to download a different core project. In this example, it downloads Pressflow Drupal instead of Core Drupal. It also shows how to do a CVS checkout of Drupal Core, although this is a bit outdated now that Drupal is using Git. I'm gonna continue scrolling down here, and you can see there's a few versions of projects being added here. If you scroll down a bit more, here there's an example of something we didn't do, which was downloading something via git clone. As you can imagine, this is an example make file, but most make files will include several more projects. They'll be a bit more complex than this. But the basic mechanics are illustrated here. Downloading modules, themes, libraries, and even cloning something from GitHub.